Happy, happy Halloween, 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 happy, happy Halloween, Silver Shamrock. Okay, that's enough of my monotoned version of the Silver Shamrock song. Now on to the video. First of all, I hope you're all having a great Halloween. Um, I hope you're staying safe. If you are going to go out, I hope you're being smart and mindful because, unfortunately, we have an asshole virus going around. But I decided to end this year's horror month with a countdown video of my top five favorite Universal Monster films. Now, what usually when people refer to the Universal Monster films, they're referring to the horror films that Universal Pictures was putting out in the 30s and 40s. However, some films from the 20s and even the 50s are also included in the Universal Monster canon. And they're usually referring to the movies that feature the classic characters like Dracula, the Frankenstein monster, the Wolfman, the Mummy, Creature from the Black Lagoon, etc. Now this video is hopefully going to also be incorporated into my friend John's video. My friend John has been asking me to give him a list of my top five favorite Universal monster films to put in his video. And he's always doing shit for me, so I figured, yeah, I kind of owe him this one. But I decided to also put it on my channel as well. So, number five is the 1931 version of Dracula, based on the Bram Stoker novel of the same name. Now, this wasn't the first adaptation of Bram Stoker's Dracula, and it's also not my favorite Dracula film, but I can't deny the importance of this film, and this is also where a lot of our modern-day interpretations of Dracula come from. Like, usually when people think of Dracula, they think of Bela Lugosi's Dracula more so than the Dracula from the novel. It's a great movie, but to me, the actor who really stole this movie was Dwight Fry as Renfield. He plays Renfield as both creepy and sympathetic. Because you do feel for this guy. He was a perfectly normal person before he met Dracula. And to me, Renfield really is the most memorable character from the movie, even more so than Dracula and Van Helsing. Number four on my list is the 1931 adaptation of Mary Shelley's Frankenstein from James Whale. Again, it's not the first adaptation of Frankenstein, and if you've read the book, you know that this movie has little to nothing to do with the source material, yet it's where a lot of our modern-day interpretations of Frankenstein come from. Colin Clive is great as Frankenstein, and Boris Karloff is just iconic as the Frankenstein monster. And there are some scenes in the movie which are honestly pretty shocking even by today's standards. Like the scene where the monster accidentally kills the little girl, and then it cuts to the girl's father carrying her dead body through the town square. That scene, even by today's standards, is pretty horrific. And you can see why the film was heavily censored at the time, but luckily today the uncut version is the most widely available version. Number three on my list is Creature from the Black Lagoon from 1954, and it's funny how this one is considered to be part of the pantheon of the Universal Monsters, yet it actually came out when the Universal Monster films were well past their heyday. It honestly fits more in with a lot of the 50s creature feature films than it does with the typical Universal Monster movie, but it's still a great movie. And the Gill Man is easily one of the most iconic monsters ever committed to celluloid. Number two on my list is The Bride of Frankenstein. I don't know if it's cheating putting two Frankenstein movies on this list or not, but The Bride of Frankenstein is an amazing movie, and it's a rare case of a sequel actually being better than it its predecessor. And it's actually a very funny movie, but it's also a really sad movie too. It's almost more of a drama. And it actually takes a lot more from the book than the first movie did. And number one on my list is The Wolfman from 1941. Just such an iconic movie. And it's not just a great horror film, it's also a great drama film as well. And Lon Chaney Jr. as Lawrence Talbot is one of the most sympathetic and tragic characters in any horror film. Now, honorable mentions would be Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein, easily one of the best horror comedies ever made, and James Whale's 1933 adaptation of H.G. Wells' The Invisible Man. Now, this one, it's been a while since I've seen, but I remember really loving The Invisible Man. Some people might be disappointed not to see The Mummy on this list, but I actually haven't seen The Mummy since I was eight years old.